If you're not using Y channels in your Dolby Atmos playback system, you should be. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasalo with AudioHawks. I want to talk to you about the channels that are often forgotten in Adobe Atmos playback system, and that's the Y channels, the speakers that go further apart than your main left and rights. You often don't see people deploying these for a variety of reasons. Number one, it's hard to put more speakers on a floor when you have valuable floor space you don't want to give up. Number two, some rooms just aren't wide enough to comfortably do that without impeding on a walkway. But before we get into those particulars, I want to talk to you guys about the content that I'm finding that's coming out with wide channels and what it does to the actual experience of listening to these Atmos tracks. So I put together a pretty rudimentary slide presentation I just want to go over with you guys here. It's called the case for wides. So in my theater room, I spent the weekend just kind of listening to various streaming Atmos, whether it was on spatial audio or I was watching the latest streaming service, what HBO Max or Disney Plus, and even my Ultra HD Blu-rays. And I was surprised to find that there's a lot of content that uses the wide channels. And some of the major recording artists of today that are doing spatial audio on Apple Music are using the wide channels. They're doing mixes up to 9.1.6. And we're talking about the big guys like The Weeknd, Billie Eilish, even Grover Washington Jr. In fact, if you are a jazz fan and you have not checked out the Grover Washington Jr. Um, see, um, recording that's in spatial audio, go check it out. It is actually just fantastic sounding. So Lots of spatial audio music. If you are an audiophile and you love listening to spatial audio music, you'll be happy to note that there are a lot of mixes that are using the Y channels. And then just streaming. You know, I was watching on the Dolby Atmos demo disc, I was watching the Unbroken clip and all the clips on that disc pretty much are using 9.1.6. In fact, that Dolby Atmos demo disc has test tones up to 9.1.6 so you could identify all of your channels in that cup of configuration but even streaming shows i was just putting on clips from the last of us that's a 9.1.6 mix and it actually uses the y channels pretty extensively so interesting stuff i did not know that we were actually streaming content video content beyond the 7.1.4 barrier but we are and just to prove that point, I looked through my Storm Audio ISP, and it's hard to see because I know that this is really small, the images here, but this shows you what the signals are coming into the decoder. And at the bottom left, channels 15 and 16 are the, are the left wide, right wide. Those are lit up. And when I turned off all the channels in my system and just isolated those channels, I was surprised to hear the amount of content that was coming out of them. What I was hearing was, was maybe a decorrelated information from the left and right channel. So you were getting that kind of dynamic decorrelated information, but also anytime that there was like background vocals, whether it was a spatial audio music mix, and especially in the mixes where they didn't use a center channel for vocals, they were actually putting those vocals between the Y channels and I was getting a phantom center. So it was strengthening the, the phantom center for Atmos mixes that don't use center channel uh, dialogue in those mixes. So then I actually logged into my storm processor and I don't know if you can see the print, but it's showing you the incoming signal. And this is from Apple TV coming in at 9.1.6. I did the same thing with the ultra HD Blu-ray Dolby Atmos demo disc. So we are getting native 9.1.6 content. And in speaking with a couple of producers, it seems like that's about the limit uh, in the studios. They are actually setting up and they're doing 9.1.6. So just to give you a kind of refresher on speaker layouts, the gold standard is basically uh, 7.1.4, where you have seven bed layers and four height channels. And that's in the picture on the left. What I'm talking about is adding those wide channels, which go towards the width of the room, more forward than the front speakers. And you can see in the diagram here, Adobe is recommended between 50 to 70 degrees from MLP. It's hard to do that though. For most people, it's hard to put speakers like that on the floor and I totally get that. In fact, I pre-wired my own theater room for that. 
I already have the pre-wires there. I just have not actually installed floor level speakers there. So this is a kind of a better diagram for you to see what they're proposing with the Y channels. But here's the thing, are the Y channels practical? Are the ideal locations practical? Well, I would tell you if you have a dedicated space and you don't mind giving up walkway space and, and the wife's not gonna get on you for adding more speakers, then yes, put them in the Dolby guideline recommended position at ear level, wider than your front channels as they're showing in this picture. But if you can't put them on the floor, and I'm proposing this to a bunch of manufacturers that are listening, do an on wall with an angled baffle. So that way it toes in and it aims at the listener. To me, that would seem to be the best approach because you're not taking up floor space and you're actually getting them on the walls in the right locations and it's not sticking out like an eyesore. That would be my first choice, to be honest with you guys, if you can pull that off. Even if you just buy an on wall and you could kind of jerry rig it using a bracket or something to angle it more towards the listening area, I think that will work out really well. And in fact, I might be doing that in a future video one of these days when I get caught up on my other projects. But what about, can you place them in the ceiling? Well, let's talk about that. Because I've always talked about how you want your LCRs never to put them in the ceiling. You always want them at ear level. So you get the best, very best fidelity, very best anchored sound coming right at you and not coming from above you because we localize sound better at ear level than we do above us or behind us. Well, in my experiments, what I did was I put some speakers. I knew when I was building this house that I was going to put four in-ceiling speakers. I had the space for six. So Don and I thought, well, why don't we just make those really front channels all the way up in the ceiling, the, the third pair. Instead of making them height channels, space them wider apart, get some angled speakers, set them up as wide, see how you like it. And if you don't like it, you just set them up as a third set of heights. Then you'd have six height channels no big deal. You'd have six tops, basically. So what I did, and I want to show you closer, you can see with the arrows, these are the wides. They're spaced further apart than my mains. They're more towards the front of the room. And then the, in front of that is the first set of, of in-ceiling speakers for the Dolby Atmos height layer. But it takes a very specific speaker to do this. So in my case, I used an angled baffle RBH VA615L. So what this does is it angles the whole mid-range and the tweeter 15 degrees towards the listener. The one thing you want to avoid is you want to avoid any in-ceiling speaker that just points the tweeter. You really want to have the entire speaker angled towards the listener. And that's what I did here. I used this kind of product for it. And in my experiment with just listening to these speakers in this configuration, it really did anchor. I was surprised to hear that it was anchoring the center of dialogue when I was listening to spatial audio, just from these two speakers, they were imaging and giving me a phantom center. I couldn't believe that. And now it did, the presentation did sound a little bit higher than my mains, but because they were placed closer to the walls, I actually perceived the sound coming from these speakers as coming from my side walls. So I thought it worked really well. Listening to Unbroken when they, you know, during the D day or during the uh, bombing scene when they're about to bomb the targets you can hear all of the engine roaring and it just really provided a more expansive sound stage with the Y channels engaged. I would flip between having the Y channels on and off and anytime I would turn them on, the airplanes just sounded bigger to me. You know, the, the little effects, the little ping pong effects, it just seemed like the whole front sound stage just expanded. So I do think it was worthy to add them as Y channels. Now in the future, I might actually just repurpose them as, an, as a third pair of tops and then get those on walls I was telling you guys about. But right now I'm kind of liking uh, what it's doing as an in-ceiling speaker. I know people are probably gonna poo-poo that idea of using an angle baffle wider placed in-ceiling speaker as wides. But everybody I've had over to do demos and listen to this actually really enjoyed it. So right now that's kind of where I'm at with that. And just to give you uh, some recap here, consider adding the Y channels. Like I said, it adds spaciousness to the front sound stage, especially for when you're dealing with uh, movies that use a lot of effects, a lot of front aerial effects like airplane movies, maybe even the Top Gun. I have to actually listen to Top Gun and see if there's wide channels in that. I haven't looked at that one yet. But one thing I said before that really sticks true is if you're listening to spatial audio music and it doesn't use dialogue in the center channel, these Y channels actually strengthen the phantom center from spatial audio mixes that don't use the center channels as vocals. I was really shocked to hear that. And I would turn them on and off 
And I'll be like, wow, that really is just amazing how it enhances that whole experience. So mixers are using them. So why aren't you? If mixers are recording in 9.1.6 for Dolby Atmos and you have the space and you have the channel count and you've got the processing power, man, I would definitely consider using those speakers. And then I was saying before, consider on walls with towing to save floor space. And as a very last resort, the, the resort that I'm doing now, use the in ceiling angled baffled speakers. So that's all I have to say about wide channels. I really think that it's a value add. Obviously, if your room can't support wide channels, no big deal. You're doing awesome if you've got 5.1.4 or above. I commend anybody that's really embracing the spatial audio and Atmos formats and setting up a dedicated listening space to enjoy with yourself and with your family and your friends and loved ones. So guys, if you like this video, please thumb it up, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.